in a team loaded with stars on both sides of the ball through six games at the halfway point. J.J. McCarthy is the unquestioned top story and really the thing that only anybody wants to talk about around this Michigan football program or when you talk about it, if you're an outsider, a national opponent, a fan of another team, you're either talking about J.J. McCarthy on offense or you're talking about the absolutely absurd Michigan defense. But we're going to talk a lot today about J.J. McCarthy because there has been some rumblings out there and a lot of speculation on whether or not he has six more regular season games as a Michigan starting quarterback, plus the playoff, plus Big Ten Championship game, okay, or whether or not he's going to return for his senior season in 2024. Later, we're going to talk some 2024. Look, you guys might say, well, James, what about Indiana this week? What about Purdue and Michigan? I, it's not moving the needle. You guys were putting out previews on UNLV and uh, who else? Uh, with, uh, Minnesota. It's not moving the needle. You guys don't really seem to care because no one thinks Michigan's going to lose one of these games. We've got a month from today till Michigan, Penn State, until you actually think the Wolverines go on the road and lose a ball game. So we're going to talk a little bit about 2024 because things could really change for this program. 12-team playoff. New coach, maybe new quarterback, a lot of players replacing, and one of the toughest schedules in the history of college football. And at the end of the show today, a little later, we're going to talk about a major update, a big update on a major Michigan football story, I should say. So you want to make sure you watch all the way through the end of today's video. Before we jump into all of those stories, I want to make sure we're getting this rolling again. This is like uh, 29 of 30 when we've done it. Michigan has got the win. So the same as always, if you guys watch the show in the past, you know it. Like the video if you want. You know, it's, it's not a game that Michigan's going to lose, you know, knock on wood. So we're going to say it's not just to, to beat Indiana. It's to drop 50 on Indiana. Like the video. Don't jinx it. Put out the good vibes. Because as always, I get the full list of people who like the video. Full people who watch it. Match them up in Excel. If you don't like the video, Michigan loses. I'm coming for you. Banning you from the channel. Maybe from YouTube. Also, I did want to make a major announcement regarding this. Uh, today will be the last day that I host a show as James Yoder. I'm changing my last name uh, tomorrow. Now, they say that when you win a Heisman Trophy, your name or your last name changes to Heisman Trophy winner because you're always being introduced. James Yoder, Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, when you're a billionaire, your last name becomes billionaire. It's James Yoder, billionaire. You can't introduce them without saying that they're a billionaire. So after I win the Powerball tonight, I will officially be known as James Yoder, billionaire. So I'll make you guys this deal. I'm winning the Powerball tonight, guaranteed. Anyone who likes the video, I'm going to take the full list. Anybody who likes the video today, got to do it before the Powerball comes out. I'm sending you 10000 bucks. That is no joke. Like the damn video. You're going to have 10000 bucks in your pocket as soon as I get my Powerball money. All right, let's talk about this Michigan football team. Crazy stat put out in the uh, Big Ten weekly release. And I've been following this. It kind of just snuck up on me. Okay, we're three games in, four games in now. Going back to the last time this team lost a Big Ten game was mid-October 2021. The team has won 18 straight Big Ten games. With a win against Indiana on Saturday, they will tie the program record uh, that was set from 1990 to 92, part of that five-year Big Ten championship run. I think it was 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. Uh, from 90 to 92, won 19 straight Big Ten games, which would be tied for fifth most all-time in the conference at 19. And they're within striking distance of Ohio State's record, which I forget what exactly what it was, but it's not too much more. It's like 26 or something like that. That Michigan could uh, maybe get the end of the season or potentially early in 2024. Going back to J.J. McCarthy. What a guy he is. He's just kind of growing up. I still remember the day he committed to Michigan, May 11th, 2019. Seeps, you might not believe this, but I was sitting with Brett and Mitch at a bar in Cincinnati, Ohio, the day about three hours before Tom Downey's wedding, J.J. McCarthy commits to Michigan. And now he's a, there was a, he was a sophomore in high school then, now he's a junior in college, and now he is helping out his teammates. He's taking his NIL money. Clayton Safey, whoever the hell that is from On3, put this out there. Carson Barnhart confirms that J.J. McCarthy has donated NIL money to his offensive lineman. And a quote here from Barnhart, it shows the character he has and how much love and trust that he has in the offensive lineman. McCarthy's just turning into a superstar before our eyes, right? Um, they have a saying for this. I'm not going to say because it's not politically correct, but, um, you know, I'm a straight man. But J.J. McCarthy's like the all-American boy, right? He looks like a supermodel. He's probably got the best personality you can imagine for a superstar quarterback. He seems like the nicest kid of all time. He's as good with the media as maybe we've ever seen at this Michigan football program. And today is the 11th, right? Three months from now, we will be one day removed, in my opinion, from Michigan's first national championship since the 1997 season. National title game of the ninth. We'll be basking in the glory. Jack and I are doing 24 hours at a male establishment. 
uh, not just going not going any further than that. When Michigan wins the national title, make a live for 24 hours. Remember, Jack, uh, if they allow live streaming in those sorts of places. Uh, and then the 11th, that'll be 90 days from today. Over these next three months, J.J. McCarthy can go from superstar quarterback to absolute legendary status. You get the win against Penn State in the road. You beat Ohio State. You win the Big Ten for a third straight year, and you make it to the national championship game. I think he's a legend even if those things happen, but if you win it, you are just straight absurd legend. Now, the stats aren't going to you know, measure up against Schurter Sanders and Caleb Williams and all these other quarterbacks that are in dogfights to the fourth quarter, throwing 15 and 20 times in the fourth quarter alone. That some of those quarterbacks alone, I think Caleb had like 19 passes in the fourth quarter in overtime just this past Saturday. That's as many as J.J.'s thrown in an entire game. So his 1,290 yards aren't going to add up. He does have the three touchdowns on the ground, so 14 total. He's inching up there. But how about this stat? Just kind of just going more and giving you more thoughts on where McCarthy has the ability to put cement himself in the Michigan you know, record books and all-time Big Ten lore is when Michigan travels to Penn State, should they win these next three games against three hapless opponents uh, in Indiana and in Michigan State, and then it's Purdue, right? After that, yeah, it'll be Purdue on November 4th. That's 16 straight Big Ten games to start his career as the starter. As far as I can tell, I went back like 40 or 50 seasons today. Didn't have a time to go back to 1902. I'm not even sure if that should count. Modern college football, the only quarterback who has done it better. I'm talking about, you know, uh, Braxton Miller won like 20, 24 straight Big Ten games, but he was like four and four his first eight as a freshman. So I'm talking about straight off your beginning of your career, starting undefeated streak. J.J. McCarthy is 13-0 now as Michigan starter in Big Ten games. Justin Fields was 16-0, two years as a starter. Could have been 20-0. Season uh, cut short by COVID, so only had six games there. J.J. McCarthy at 17-0. That's the best start ever for the Big Ten quarterback, at least as I can find, going back to the mid-70s. Might cement himself with a, another college football playoff trip. Maybe a Heisman, first-team All-American. Could be the best quarterback in the history of the Big Ten. I think Justin Fields, as of right now, you beat Fields in some of these metrics. You maybe have better stats, better success than him. You could be calling J.J. McCarthy, Michigan's and the Big Ten's all-time greatest. The Wolverines are now a half point less favored than they were yesterday. 33 and a half point favorite over Indiana. It's a big noon kickoff coming up on Saturday. If you want to bet it, you guys know where to bet. Bet US, et cetera, et cetera. 33 and a half points, 46 point over under. So the sports books have absolutely no faith that Indiana can score maybe even a point against Michigan. Uh, I think Michigan's going to uh, take it. But I'll ask you guys the question at the bottom of the screen. Let me know down in the comments where you're watching the game at. I'm sure many of you will be going to the game, but uh, couch, bar, stadium, not watching because I got a kid's soccer game, got to work. Let me know down in the comments. See where JJ McCarthy ranks for Mel Kuyper. I don't put a ton of stock in Mel Kuyper because he's wildly wrong, but he's been doing it for the longest time. He's got JJ as the number six quarterback on his big board. And it's funny, if you look at these guys, uh, USC, Texas, Washington, Oregon, those are all teams that Michigan's playing next year, but it's very likely that none of those quarterbacks will be on those rosters next year. So we only have six quarterbacks in the first round. If you stick to this and Kuiper's rankings, J.J. McCarthy is not going to be a first-round draft pick, I think, although almost every other mock draft I've seen does have him as a first-rounder. We're going to talk more about J.J. McCarthy, but I want to remind you, end of the show, got an update from a very good source, father of a former Michigan football star, updated me on what's going on behind the scenes with Jim Harbaugh's contract, so make sure you guys watch till the end of today's show. I saw this on Twitter yesterday. There's no way J.J. will turn Michigan. He's a first-rounder. He'd be stupid, James. You're talking crazy. Oh, we thought the same thing last year with uh, C.J. Stroud. That's the Ohio State fans were chirping me in the comments, blah, blah, blah. They say that. They say that. But there's a big difference as a first-rounder where you're taken in the first round. So we went to the archives, talked to the, uh, the data analytics gurus, pulled these numbers. Nobody else has these numbers. It's what first-round picks get paid in the, in the uh, NFL draft. Uh, I'm just kidding there. Of course, anybody can get these numbers. But I want to make sure you guys could see Bryce Young, the first pick in the draft last year. So let's say JG's the first pick in the draft this year. The number is going to be slightly, maybe 5%, 10% higher than that. Every year goes up just a little bit. But Bryce Young is the number one pick, $9.5 million a year over his first four years. Then as the fifth-year option, which what Tom Downey, our draft expert, told me, which is like anywhere from 20 to $24 million, depending on if you're – you know, like a, uh, if you're a pro bowler or anything like that, you can get a little bit escalator clause. So $36, $38 million over four years. If you're the 15th pick in the draft, it goes down to $17 million, $4.15 million a year 
So you're losing 20, what is that, what's the math on that? 21, 21 and a half million dollars um, from first pick to 15. So how do you drop down to 31? You're making 2.95, $11.82 million. We're talking about the difference, folks, of $26 million by being the first pick in the first round or the last pick in the first round. There was only 32 picks last year because I was the Dolphins got uh, taken a pick or something like that. So might have the 32 pick would be slightly below that. So that's a lot of money to leave out there on the table. If you're the fourth or fifth quarterback, 18th pick in the draft, 20th pick in the draft, that's a $13, $14 million contract. That's a big difference from $9.5 million per year guaranteed for four years. I'll tell you what's guaranteed, though. It's that you're going to have fun this weekend by playing Prize Picks, the ultimate daily fantasy sports platform that takes your passion for sports to the next level. I've been low key or maybe high key addicted to Prize Picks all season long, where you can select your favorite athletes in college or the pros and make predictions on their performance for a chance to win big. I'm letting it ride this weekend, baby. Patrick Mahomes. Javante Williams, Marvin Mims, this is all Thursday night football coming up tomorrow. I put a 20 spot on it to win 100, 5x my money. You see, you got Patrick Mahomes here. I'm going more than 268 yards. He's going to make it rain against the Broncos' poorest secondary. They gave up 70 points to the Dolphins just a few weeks ago. Also putting less on Javante Williams. The Broncos have no running game. Nevertheless, they're going to be behind early to the Chiefs, and so they're going to have to play catch-up all game long. And then Marvin Mims, because they're going to be down, the Broncos going to be passing all game long. He is going to go more than the 18 and a half yards receiving, which seems a crazy number. He's put up some good numbers the last two weeks. You see here, put a 20 spot on it. If I get just those three guesses right, more or less, for Mahomes, Javante Williams, Marvin Mims Jr., my 20 bucks turns into a $100 winning. I've won one of my prize picks this year, uh, Monday Night Football, a couple weeks. It was last week, last Monday. Uh, on a two, two, uh, two prize picks losing streak since then, so I'm going to get that cash back tomorrow. It's super easy. It's super fun. I'll have some college football picks from Michigan, Ohio State players on Thursday or Friday. Make sure you guys go get started with prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use promo code CLNS. That's promo code CLNS. Down in the comments, down in the description of the video, get your first deposit match up to $100. So you put $100 bucks in there like I did, you get an extra 100 to play with, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Absolutely love the, pro pro the product, and I am not a daily fantasy sports guy. Price Picks has completely changed that for me. Let's go back to the haters and the losers and the fanboys, of which there are many. Um, the no way JJ returns. I, the people are chirping me all night on Twitter, on Instagram, a few people in the YouTube comments, because I just said this. Looking at Michigan's roster next year, it's not, I don't think at this point, going to be as sparse as I and maybe you thought coming into this season. There's no way that JJ is going to return. He's going to be a first-round draft pick. That's old thinking. That's thinking before NIL, okay? The Michigan way, thinking back 20-plus years, you had Desmond Howard leave after his fourth year, redshirt junior year, et cetera. We're going back to the, the 90s. You had Charles Woodson. But for a long time, up until maybe the last five or six years, Jabril Peppers and some other players, um, Michigan was kind of the Duke. Uh, Duke basketball was forever until – you know, I don't know, 15 years ago, where players would say four years, right? For the most part, over the course of the 70s, 80s, once you were able to go pro early, Michigan only lost like one player a decade. Every player would stay to the senior. And even recently, Blake Corum this year, Zach Sinter, Jake Long, number one pick in the draft, Marlon Jackson, Leon Hall, Chad Henney, Brandon Edwards, all guys who would have been top 15, top 20 picks after their junior year. Maybe Henney might not have been, but he would have certainly been a second rounder, uh, came back for their senior year. So it's not like we haven't seen this before with a Michigan football player. Just saw it last year, Blake Corum. Just saw it last year with Zach Sinter. Saw it with Aiden Hutchinson two years ago. He played himself from a late first rounder up to the second pick in the draft. And probably, honestly, one of the top five players in five defensive players in the NFL so far this season. I'll ask you guys this question because I'm going to reach out to these people. The One More Year Fund, we should just be doing a fundraiser here on the show, give you guys a link to donate from this show. So if I get a bunch of yeses, or JJ's, I should say, uh, we might do it. I'm going to have to donate like 10 grand myself of my, uh, of course, of my Powerball winnings. Um, would you donate a dollar, five dollars, a hundred dollars to a one more year NIL fund specifically for JJ McCarthy? If you would, even as little as a dollar, give me a JJ in the comments. If no, you must just be down on your luck or an Ohio State fan. Give me a no in the comments. Make sure you comment either way. We're going to tabulate those up, take the data to the NIL people. Maybe we'll put together a fund of our own to keep JJ in Ann Arbor. Next year's schedule is daunting. And with a new quarterback, we're just talking some 
2024 Michigan football with uh, some coworkers right before we started filming. Who's the quarterback next year if it's not JJ? It's not anybody on the roster. It's not Jaden Denegal. It's certainly not Alex Orgy. It's not Jack Tuttle. It's certainly not going to be Davis Warren. So it's either going to be uh, a true freshman in um, Jaden Daniels or Jaden Daniels, Jaden Davis, or it's going to be a transfer portal guy. I think more likely, more than likely, Michigan's going to go heavy in the transfer portal. Davis still has an opportunity to win the job. If he comes in, he's going to be enrolled in Michigan in January as an early enrollee. He can win the job. He'll have every opportunity in spring and the summer, but I still think you want to go into a season with a schedule like this with a only relying on a true freshman quarterback. So Michigan's going to be very aggressive in the transfer portal if J.J. leaves. But is this 24 schedule looking as hard as I think I thought it was last week when it was released that you probably thought it was that people are calling the hardest schedule in Big Ten history? It doesn't look that bad. I hear a little water break here. It does look that bad if J.J. returns and then Caleb Williams and Michael Penix and Bo Nix and Quinn Ewers all leave their schools and not as daunting of a schedule if those teams if those teams lose their quarterbacks in hell. If J.J. comes back, even better for Michigan. Jack People are putting the heat on too much. I'm getting a little uh, thirsty, a little thing. Good thing I grabbed this water beforehand. How confident are you guys in Michigan football after the 2023 season? It's been a three-year run that we haven't seen the likes of in 30-plus years, and maybe ever, right? Going to break a lot of records for winning streaks in conference, winning streaks overall. Um, this team hasn't lost a regular season game in two years. How confident are you in this program after the 2023 season? All kinds of question marks in the new era of college football. 18-team Big Ten. 12-team college football playoff. Let me know on a scale of 1 through 10. Going back to J.J. McCarthy. You think we're switching topics yet? We are not. J.J. McCarthy, um, I just can't quantify how huge it would be for him to come back. Now, if he's a top 10 pick, go. Go get your money. Get, go get out there. But if you're getting the, the results back from the scouts and everything after the season, they're saying, hey, J.J., we've got to use our fifth quarterback, our sixth quarterback, our fourth quarterback, which I think they would be wrong if they were. I think J.J. is up there with the top two or three guys. Um, he should come back because of the money opportunity and to cement him his place in Big Ten and Michigan football lore. And this offense, with all the guys who have been getting playing time this year, it doesn't look as dire. We're not going to get as many guys leaving early, right? I don't think Diamond Edwards is going to leave early anymore because of the slow start he had. So you have a fight for the running back job between Kalel Mullings, Diamond Edwards. You're going to have Colson Lovin, a budding star at tight end, and either J.J. McCarthy or a transfer portal quarterback. Um, you've got Guys making all kinds of plays at receivers. Tyler Morris will be a returning starter. Um, Clemens, Moore, Samaj Morgan, Portal guys. There's a few other players in there that could uh, make an impact next year at, at the skill position for Jim Harbaugh or the next coach's 2024 team. But how about the offensive line? Oh, the entire offensive line is going to leave after this season. I saw some idiot on YouTube say that. That was me. But um, you could have some of them come back, all right? Giovanni al Hadi is not a starter but he's got starting experience over the last two years. I think I've got him as the left tackle next year. Ladarius Henderson has to leave. But Trevor Keegan can come back next year if he wants. Six-year, COVID year, redshirt, Drake Nugent. He's got the COVID six year as well next year. Right guard, we will see. I don't think Zach Zinter, he can come back. I don't think he will. And then it's either going to be Carson Barnhart. If he goes pro, then it will be Miles Hitton. So Barnhart can come back again for a six year. So even though it looks like all these guys we said are fourth, fifth, or six-year players, um, you've got three fifth-year guys. You've got a six-year player in, in Ladarius Henderson. He's the only one that has to leave because of that 2020 season not counting towards eligibility. So the offense could be absolutely stacked. I'll go to the defense in a second. But I did want to remind you that you have the pleasure of watching the most popular Michigan football show for three years running across any platform, TV, radio, podcast, YouTube, more audience, more engagement, more subscribers than any other show. So make sure you, if you have yet to do so, hit that subscribe button and Send the friends of all your Michigan football text chats, Facebook pages, etc. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. How about the defensive line? I think the def best defensive line in college football this year, the only one who's probably going to leave for sure is Chris Jenkins. So you move Rayshon, Trap Money, Benny up there into the five tech in the middle. You got Mason Graham, potentially the best player on the entire roster right now, coming back for his junior year. Jalen Harrell's got two more years. He's a two-year starter right now. 
He's got a COVID year and a redshirt year. He's got two more years of eligibility. He could go pro, but I don't think anyone's mocking him as a top three or four rounder right now. So you still have Josiah Stewart. You still have Derek Moore, who could start almost any program in the country as backups for another year. Braden McGregor's got another year next year. So this defensive line, the only one you're moving in in the two deep is true freshman Cameron Brandt, who got a bunch of run the last two games. So absolutely stacked still on the defensive line, unless McGregor, Jalen Harrell decide to go pro, which I don't think that they will. How about the linebacker? Junior Colson could leave after this year, but he's not being projected as a first-rounder anymore. He hasn't had that great of a season individually. He's not standing out, so he'll come back for a senior year, I think, unless he wants to be a third-round draft pick. Ernest Hausman has been getting starter staffs, but Mike Barrett's still the starter. He's in the sixth year. Barrett's gone after this year. But how about the secondary? Secondary, I thought, was going to be really struggling next year. I thought Rod Moore was going to be gone. We didn't know who the second cornerback was going to be even this season. I thought Macari Page could have a hell of a year and break out, but no one, you know, it's again, where is they being projected in the NFL draft? Page is two years more of eligibility. Keon Saab is only a sophomore. He's grabbed a hold of that free safety job, started for the six games. So the consensus out there, at least in my opinion, is that Rod Moore, after starting as a true freshman, a sophomore in 21 and 22, has now gotten beat out by Keon Saab as a junior, and he'll continue to rotate in this year, but next year he will replace Mikey Sanders still at that nickel spot, and you'll either have Josh Wallace in his sixth year uh, as the starting quarterback again, or super freshman Jair Hill will kind of come up in the world and be your second starting quarterback. So if you look at that, right, if you look at that offense, that defense, that looks like a top two or three team if J.J. McCarthy's the quarterback. If he's not, Michigan needs to go out there like Notre Dame did this year and other schools and get themselves a bona fide Power 5 starter. That's not a massive drop-off from J.J. McCarthy. Now let's talk about Jim Harbaugh's contract. I will save the best or the worst, depending on what your feelings are on Harbaugh, for the end of the show. The question I'll ask you guys before I give you the little nugget. So don't, don't keep watching until you answer this question. Where will Harbaugh coach in 2024? Will it be the Michigan Wolverines, the greatest program in all of college football, or will it be coaching in the NFL? Give me an M or an N. Let me know what the vibes are you're feeling on Harbaugh's future. So let's take a step back on Jim Harbaugh. After the 2021 season, he got his contract you know, reassembled, reshuffled, really restructured, I guess you'll call it. He's the second year in 2023 of a five-year restructured deal that runs through the 2026 season. Five years, 36.7 mil, pays him a base that kind of gradually grows from uh, where it started, ends up being 7.63 million base in his final year in 2026. He does have a lot of incentives, right? He does have incentives that he got the last two seasons um, of up to $3 million if Michigan wins the Big Ten East, uh, makes the college football playoff, wins the Big Ten championship, wins the national championship, can make up to three million dollars more and that's why he made over 10 million dollars in the 2022 season because of those incentives the only one he really missed out on was the i guess it was like 9.5 uh was the one million dollars for winning the national championship but he addressed it in his own press conference on monday got the question asked typical harbaugh is oh i don't talk about things about my contract until after the season or uh we'll let it play out over the time and he just always so vague about it the best one was when he, when he's with the 49ers uh, kind of set the standard for deflecting when you're looking at another job is, Jim, rumors out there you're going to take the Michigan football job. And he said, you know, every single press conference, uh, I've got a rule that I only really talk about the job that I have. I don't speculate on other jobs. That's for you guys to do, right? Just ends the conversation. But he did address it. He did address it, and it sent shockwaves through the Michigan administration, the athletic department, the athletic director, boosters, all the way up to university president Santa Ono. The boosters and Santa Ono have what I've been told as of a phone call this morning with, with the insider, right? The, one of the three wise men said they have delivered the message to Michigan athletic director Ward Manuel, who's kind of a schmuck, um, get this deal finished. I said on Monday or Tuesday, whichever one it was, I said that they don't need to go crazy. They don't need to do Jimbo deal, 10 years, $100 million. Don't be stupid. Do a five-year, $75 million deal. $15 million a year makes him clearly the highest paid coach in college football. I'm sure Kirby Smart or Nick Saban, they'll get raises. They'll bump over that. But set a new standard. Show Harbaugh that he's getting the love. He said that in the past. He wants to feel the love. You put this deal in front of him. No NFL team is going to be able to come and poach him away. And you win a national title, you continue to go, you can renegotiate and give him a better raise or a longer-term deal in two or three seasons. It happens with every coach in the history of college football that's been successful, except for at one place, and that's at the fucking University of Michigan. They got their heads up their ass when they come to Harbaugh. You want Brady Hoke back? You want Rich Rod back? You want to go 3-8 and eight like you did 2008? Let Harbaugh leave after nine seasons as head coach, and that, 
I guarantee you, is what you're going to get. The bye week's coming up, okay? You got Indiana. You got um, you got Michigan State coming up on the 21st night game in East Lansing. No game on the 28th. So you're going to have two weeks before the Purdue game. Get a deal done there. Harbaugh does not have to focus completely on a game coming up. He can take a step back, take a breather, meet with Michigan, meet with his lawyer, whoever's doing the deal, get a five-year, $75 million deal done because this has got to happen. If you let it go past the Ohio State game, I can tell you this, folks, Jim Harbaugh is as good as gone as Michigan's coach after the 2023 season. I'll be back on Thursday. Till then, go Blue. Thank <laughs> you.